Hello listeners, welcome to English program podcast Kaleidoscope. Listeners, in our today's program, we have an interesting interview on the topic the new education policy from the perspective of students. The expert for this interview is Dr. Milind Naik. He is a member of Maharashtra State Steering Committee for Implementation of the National Education Policy 2020. He is currently the principal of Nyan Prabodhini Prashala, Pune. The interviewer is Rishima Acharya, who is a class 10th student of New India School located at Bhusari Colony. So let us listen to this interview on the new education policy from the perspective of students. We are here in All India Radio Studios. It is an honor to interview Dr. Naik Sir on National Education Policy 2020. When this policy was introduced to all, I was excited and also curious and I was very willing to ask my queries. First of all, warm welcome to Naik Sir. Thank you for being present here and taking out your time to be interviewed at All India Radio Station. Thank you, Rishima. Here goes my first question. The most discernible feature of the new education system is the removal of separate streams. How will the removal of separate streams affect the career that we wish to choose? It's a very good question to start with, Rishma. I didn't feel that uh, you'll ask this question at the beginning of the, our interview. See, the days are changing. And in the olden days, education was very much complex departmental, it was compartmentalized and uh, divided into various uh, streams like uh, science, arts and commerce. Nowadays, the upcoming careers are not so much compartmentalized. They are either multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary as well. I would like to give you one example. One of my students recently took admission at the IIT Gandhinagar for pursuing MSc Cognitive Sciences and now he, he basically did his BSc in uh, Zoology from Garwari College Pune and uh, he joined for MSc Cognitive Sciences. Now there the, he will be studying how one understands the concepts or how the human beings think, right? or reflect. Now for that purpose he has to study psychology as well along with his knowledge about the neurological sciences as a part of uh, zoology he should also study the psychology and now see the MSc cognitive science is a interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary subject and that's why uh, he has to study both psychology and uh, zoology. Such kinds of careers are coming up and there are many. So art therapy is there. Uh, various kinds of uh, interdisciplinary courses are coming up. And so you need not be restricted to the compartmentalized streams like science, arts and commerce. So that's what NEP says that we have to remove the compartmentalizations. Yes, sir. So does that mean that students have to choose subjects for their careers at the beginning of the secondary stage, that is grade 9? You're absolutely right. See, have you gone through the national education policy? Yes. The draft at least? Yes. If you have gone through that, it is mentioned that there will be about 10 domains or disciplines for the 10th standard board exam which will include the humanities, that means languages, mathematical, uh, mathematics or computational sciences, plus science, social science, then art education, uh, physical education, some interdisciplinary subject, and uh, vocational education as well. Yes. So there are about 10 domains uh, which you have to undergo. Now, uh, you have to be, uh, as the freedom given in these things, uh, in these options is given to you, uh, you have to be a little bit more choosy. You have to choose the yes. options purposefully with 
proper consciousness you have to be very aware while you choose the uh, subject likewise you can take any two languages as your first subject then uh, within that you can choose indian languages like sanskrit or pali or kannada anything that you want yes among the foreign languages you can choose french german and of course english nowadays we don't feel that english yes. is a foreign <laughs> language but uh, you can choose that also yes likewise you have options to choose hmm. within science uh, there is no option you have to take as it is but uh, in mathematics uh, you can decide whether you have to go for fundamental mathematics or basic mathematics or for the standard mathematics yes. so there will be some difference between the these two papers yes basic mathematics for all those who would, wouldn't like to opt for the higher education mm. and the standard mathematics will be for those who would like to study maths in the higher education as well mm. most probably it will be helpful for the science stream all those who would like to do some career in sciences yes so you have to choose among those two social sciences again there are no options over there but uh, within arts you can choose any one there are many forms of arts yes. so you can choose you have to be very choosy about that physical education of course sports is there you have to select any one sports that is offered by your school and further among the vocational education that's very important now now the thrust is much given on the vocational education in national education policy so among uh, vocational educations you have to choose one or two subjects so that you can explore the world of professionalism okay what is what what are the vocational subjects they are nothing but you work for adding adding some economic value right you yes. work for some earning money right yes and so uh, they are professionals hmm. uh, so you have to choose among various vocational uh, subjects and they are as many as 18 as put by the cbse board so you have to be a little bit careful thoughtful while choosing one of these subjects yes hmm. that is definitely going to be going to affect your further career my next question is the current education system carries out theoretical practice while educating students what is the motive of bringing experimental learning and how convenient will it be for students to shift to experimental learning given that children might react to the same stimulation in different manners see what should be the output of education you should be able to do something right yes only the theoretical things are not e- enough when i completed my bsc chemistry yes i was uh, unable to do anything i was not equipped enough to do anything see after completing my bsc chemistry i should have been able to make uh, some compounds in the laboratory right i should be able to prepare crocine that is uh, paracetamol yes i should be able to prepare at least chalk at least ink but that kind of uh, education i haven't taken yes i hadn't taken at that time mm. and so i was not uh, competent enough to do something so the purpose of education is the person should be able to perform act upon do something create some product right and uh, that is what is the aim of education but today's education system uh, doesn't impart the practical knowledge of that yes so this education policy itself says that person should become competent enough to work as a professional and here comes the role of experiences learning by doing working in laboratories doing something by your hands right that is what is very much important while doing your pursuing your education and so 
this national education policy gives lots of emphasis on learning by doing yes sir my next question is the new education policy asserts a lot of importance on computer language we understand that computers and technology are present and future of this world but will the new policy be able to balance technology with traditional subjects or rather with subjects from art stream like history economics and others see uh, computers and hence the coding is just a tool yes it doesn't have any meaning without any attachment hmm. or affiliation with the pure subjects yes right for what you will learn the coding you, you will be doing some programming yes for what there will uh, there will be a purpose ah uh, there will be a purpose right uh some survey is done you want to yes. put the data in the processor and come to some certain conclusion for that purpose you have to study statistics you have to know what is the purpose of survey that means it must have to be related with certain subjects yes right? what i mean to say is uh computer is a simple tool it doesn't have its own agenda yes ah, just like mobile you have to decide for what purpose you have to use the mobile similarly computer coding if you learn that it's well and good you have to learn that yes it is it has become necessary in the coming days these days but you have to have some purpose you have to have some certain subject knowledge without which you will not be able to apply that knowledge uh, the policy also mentions that bilingual textbooks will be introduced to school students now we understand why these are introduced but will it affect the way we learn languages right lots of emphasis is given here in the national education policy on multilingualism may i know what is your mother tongue marathi you are from marathi background right yes. marathi family and in which language you are studying what is the medium of instruction in your school english english so you must have faced lots of difficulties in your primary school yes isn't it yes you are talking marathi at your home you are talking with in marathi with your friends but when you go to school suddenly you have to talk or listen to english only right yes. and uh, that takes lots of time to get adapted with isn't it yes i won't say it's a difficult thing but it takes some time now let's understand that there are many dialects in the maharashtra or in all over india and uh, there are many uh, societies families communities where their mother tongue is different than this students medium of instruction in the school yes uh, let's take example of say konkani konkani people the student talks konkani at the home yes and has to learn uh, these academics in marathi in pure marathi in the marathi medium school yes or sometimes in english also hmm. or let's take example of madia gondi no they talk madia at the home and suddenly he has to learn pure marathi marathi which is uh, talked in the pune yes. right pure marathi yes uh so this is a very uh, difficult thing for the students whose mother tongue is different than the medium of instruction in the school so the, what this national education policy says is use both the languages at least in the primary section so that uh, the student whose mother tongue is different than the medium of instruction will not run away from the school yes right at least he will get some friends he will get comfortable with the school environment and he will get adapted with the environment in the school till that period at least teacher should talk in both the languages students mother tongue as well as 
medium of instruction expected in the school and that's why this national education policy insists on uh, appointing local teachers yes hmm. local teachers so konkan area should have teachers from the same locality so that the teacher will know konkani as well as marathi and will be able to include the students who are purely konkani yes, right sir. yes sir in india uh, currently there are different boards like ssc cbse and so on and all these different boards have different features will this division continue with the new education policy ideally there should be one nation one board isn't it yes so there will not be any discretion among the any boards but uh, uh, this is not possible in india this is because in india we have very diverse population diverse cultures there are 22 languages listed right and so many dialects and so it's very difficult to get adapted to include all the communities uh, in the education field and so different boards will take care of different people different communities different language talking people yes and so maharashtra there are marathi talking people so there must be some different board than the cbse board where the uh, emphasis is given on hindi or the english yes here in maharashtra we should give emphasis on marathi right yes and similarly there are some subjects like history and geography hmm. which will be little bit different than the history and geography taught in uttar pradesh yes. or the rajasthan hmm. because they have different kind of uh, environment over there different geographical features over there and also they will be having different history as well so in order to accommodate the history in maharashtra history uh, geographical features in maharashtra uh, the maharashtra board should be there which will have little bit different kind of syllabus than the central syllabus yes sir would there still be boards for grade 10th and 12th then national education policy has never said that there won't be any board exams so there they are going to conduct board exams for 10th and 12th in both the standards however their importance will get reduced okay so for example you might have heard that central university entrance exams c u e t exams right c u yes. e t exams and uh, those exams will be administered for getting admission for the degree courses right yes. now if you are going to have entrance exam for getting admission for the graduations graduation courses hmm. then obviously the importance of 12th standard will get reduced hmm. right now there is another feature which is mentioned in the national education policy that standard 11th and standard 12th schooling should be attached to your middle school yes. or the secondary school yes right if you are going to take admission in the same school in which you are studying for the 10th hmm. then the importance of uh, examination at the 10th is reduced yes right yes so yes. board examinations will be there but their importance will be reduced yes sir uh, my next question is that the new policy also states that school students of grade 3rd 5th and 8th will have to take examinations that will be conducted by appropriate authority will these examinations be similar to 10th and 12th board examinations and who will be conducting these examinations uh, will all students all over the state have the same question paper and would there be assessment criteria and what will happen if the students fail to pass these exams 
Yes. In the national education policy, it is mentioned that there will be some central examination in the third, fifth, eighth, tenth, and twelfth standard. Yes. Right. So five central examinations. Yes. Isn't it contradictory? In a way, national education policy is saying that uh, the burden on the students should be reduced. Yes. And the same policy is saying that there will be five central examinations for the students. Yes. In their school days. Hmm. The answer is no. Right. The there will be there will be central examinations at uh, third, fifth, and eighth. Conducted by central agencies, but the report cards will not be given to the students. Okay. Those examinations will be conducted only for the purpose of guidance to the principals of the school. Okay. So that will be the report card of the schools. Yes. How the school is functioning. Uh, whether it is imparting good education in the school, quality education in the school, what kind of uh, drawbacks are there, whether their uh, science education is lagging behind, whether they are giving uh, good e education in mathematics, hmm. like that. So that will be the report card of the school and not of the individual student. Okay. Hmm. And it's, it's already started. Uh, there is a scheme called a SAFAL, started by CBSC. So it will give report card to the school and to the principal. So in a way, it is examination of your teachers, not you. Yes, sir. We are moving towards the end of our interview. And uh, sir, I think that uh, education is thoroughly important for our career, but our childhood is also equally important. So how much emphasis will be given to physical education and sports activities? And I think we all are really eager to know what will be the span of our summer vacations when this new policy is implemented. Right. You might have heard that this national education policy gives thrust on overall all-round development of the student. Yes. Earlier, lots of emphasis was given on the academics part. But this policy insists that all-round development of students should occur. Yes. Right. And so the sports and arts education is having lots of importance in the development of the student. So lots of emphasis is given. Uh, CBC has already implemented these things. Hmm. Likewise, CBC says that there should be five periods a week for sports oh isn't it yes. good huh? yes and uh, three periods per week for arts so you will be able to enjoy the school education right yes All yes right. very you much should. and uh, not only that it is insisted that you should use means teachers should use arts while teaching science Hmm. Sports related activities or sports while teaching the social sciences. Yes. Right. So this is, this is in technical words, it is called as art integrated education, sports integrated e education. So lots of emphasis is given on the sports and arts education in this policy. Yes. Uh, so the education should be fun, right? Yes. It should not be burden on the students. Yes. Uh, this type of care has been taken by the uh, national education policy. Uh, what was your last question? Um, we would like to know the span of summer vacations when this oh, new policy is implemented. You are worried about your vacation. <laughs> yes. Uh, everything is going to remain as it is. There is no reduction in the vacation or the holidays. But only the thing introduces if you wish to have some kind of internship during vacation, yes. that will be allowed. And uh, for example, if you want to work somewhere uh, in some industry, hmm. you will have 
facility to do that. The school will make some arrangement to get experience from the industry or company or some hospitality uh, or seva, something like that, right? So the school will arrange something for you to have internship or apprenticeship somewhere in the professional institutes. And that is not mandatory right now. But if you wish to have some kind of experiences, school will definitely arrange for you in your vacations. But that's up to you. Yes. So I'm very excited about the new education policy after hearing what you have said. And thank you once again for being here and solving all my queries. Thank you, Rashima. I appreciate you are a very responsible student and uh, you are taking conscious well-informed decision and you are so much interested in national education policy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So listeners, that was an interview on the topic, the new education policy from the perspective of students. The expert was Dr. Milin Naik, member of Maharashtra State Steering Committee for Implementation of National Education Policy 2020. And the interviewer was Rishima Acharya, a class 10 student of New India School. Hope you enjoyed listening to this program. We will be back next week with another interesting subject. Until then, thanks for listening and please stay tuned as our next program follows.